My name is Scott. I am the publisher of Part-Time Audiophile. And today I want to talk about my absolute favorite topic, audiophile cabling, which is why I'm in the hot room. Audiophile cabling is one of those topics I ain't kind of guaranteed to light any audiophile discussion kind of on fire. Uh, there are people who uh, very clearly go one camp versus the other, and it's uh, pretty much assumed that these two groups will never interact. Uh, on one side are the folks that say definitively, uh, audiophile cabling cannot, does not, will not matter to the overall sound quality of your hi-fi system. And on the other, hi other side are those who disagree with that. I uh, used to move pretty freely uh, from one side to the other. I don't know why. It just kind of uh, some days I was really uh, open-minded. I think I called it my I called myself open-minded, and sometimes I was really uh, definitively uh, sure. But I was definitively sure about yes or no, and it whatever. I kind of split the split the uh, split the difference. My my background, I guess, in audiophile cabling, I think I started the website, parttimeaudiophile.com, with a post about digital audio cables and whether or not they might matter. Uh, I eventually came to the position that, yes, they do matter, uh, but they not, may not necessarily matter very much, um, especially if you get to a certain level, right? Going from one brand to another after that certain threshold has been met of quality, your uh, USB cables, you know, don't tend to matter a whole lot anymore. They just, you, you get to a certain point and then you, you're good. Um, there's some caveats to that now, but that's another, another video. Audio file cables like interconnects, power cords, and speaker cables, however, uh, there's this long standing debate. Um, a great number of uh, interesting and well-respected audiophiles still believe, uh, and if they're entitled to believe, but they believe that electrical connections are either uh, made or they're not made, and who cares, right? Zip cord uh, is what they call it, right? Uh, or a bent uh, uh, hanger uh, will be just fine to connect any audio component and the resulting sound will be more about whether the connection is strong uh, than anything about the uh, connecting material itself. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say to these people. Uh, if that's your belief, awesome, congratulations, you've saved yourself some money. Please feel free to never explore again. Those of us who started in that camp and were moved from that camp kind of unwillingly probably will tell you a story of some experience where something happened. For me, something happened. A local dealer uh, was doing some demos for me and as part of those demos, uh, we had to move some equipment and as part of those moves, we needed longer cables. We had to go from one brand to another. And then I had to come up with a way to explain and then justify the change in sound that I heard just from moving a component from one position to another position, right? We swapped a cable. We had to swap a slightly longer cable, went from one brand to another. Yeah. So we started talking about uh, what could this possibly mean? Are our cables uh, really components? Are they tone controls? I think this is another uh, kind of related argument that cables do matter. Uh, they do create uh, an impact on sound. It's just, you know, it's a tone control and it should be avoided, right? These are bad designs, not uh, good designs. Talking again to dealers, I think that most of them uh, kind of finesse this in the sense that they know um, that uh, the components that they're matching for you, they're matching them to uh, a sound that they like or a sound that you like. And part of that matching may well be 
in the cables. That's why they have maybe more than one brand uh, because this particular brand they believe uh, will provide uh, more base definition or less treble harshness or something like that. That is their tone control. They're used as, control. they know that they're tone controls and that when they have them as options, they can create a more pleasing experience for the average consumer. This would cause, I think, a lot of uh, heads to explode on audio forums because uh, tone controls, so the very idea of a tone control would cause uh, serious, uh, serious problems for any audio purist, which is pretty much the entire audiophile community. I think that um, that's a little silly, but so be it. Um, there is an argument to say that, well, once we get past the obvious things that this cable is quote unquote warm or this cable is quote unquote lean or this cable is quote unquote extended in the base or this cable is quote unquote extended in the treble. Once we get past that, uh, then maybe there's the sense that uh, a well-made cable should do no harm, right? Um, and I think that's, that's a, a fine way to think about things. I think we've kind of confusing the difference between a preamp and a, and a power cord here, but do no harm is not necessarily a bad, a bad goal. I have had the experience uh, of some cables actually doing more than just tone control. They actually do seem to provide things like clarity, right? It's not an adjective I, I'm happy to use, but uh, the experience is uh, very similar to the, the idea that I am somehow uh, less removed from the original performance. I don't know why audio cables can make that change, but I have seen that, heard that, felt that. I don't necessarily have feelings about audio costs. Um, I've been a business analyst and business development uh, kind of expert for 25 years building businesses is hard uh, and not everybody is able to minimize costs in a way that would allow them to provide novel products at a price point that the average Joe would find unobjectionable. That would be awesome if it were true, uh, but most audio companies are not giant mega national sort of things. So they have to operate on uh, economics of small scale, which means that everything is more expensive and you need to realize your profits in a way that allows you to continue to operate, which means that costs are, will be significantly higher. And that may also mean that that company that wants to be successful will have to do things, aesthetic things uh, to the product that make it look like it's worth like economically valued uh, to be at the price that they're now forced to charge. These are business uh, conversations, right? If you've, got a, if you've got an objection about this, the Harvard Business School is, is the place to go to have that. Um, I, I am not a, uh, an MBA and I don't play one on TV, but I do know that uh, most of our discussions about value and cost, that is, is this a ripoff, are stupid, right? We, we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Yet on, on audio forums, we certainly uh, do manage to make the case that we are expert about every dang thing we feel like shooting our mouth off. So be it, right? I wanna say also uh, that uh, audiophile cables, um, digital analog power, uh, they, don't have to be the most expensive thing in your audio system, probably ought not to be. If you are uh, lucky enough, uh, fortunate enough to own a half a million dollar loudspeaker, uh, then, you know, a, a $5,000 interconnect, fine. You know, I don't really care. Uh, I think that that's perfectly legitimate. If that's what, how you wanna spend your money, great. Um, Personally, my personal experience, I tend to shoot way lower on the cost spectrum for audiophile cabling. I don't really uh, have a particular formula in mind. That is, if I spend this 
amount on my system, right? Say it's $10,000. I should spend 10% of that in cabling. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Uh, it can be the case that certain uh, experiences you have lead you to certain brands that uh, provide more joy to you. A nice gentle way of saying brand loyalty happens and brand loyalty may uh, get you to an experience that that particular uh, uh, product line within that brand is the one that you believe to be the one you like. So you use it, whether it's uh, high value or low value, it's just not how this goes. Audio uh, as an experience really is an aesthetic experience. It's about how it uh, kind of interacts with you. It makes you feel. Uh, so if your cables uh, improve that experience, I think that's a good expense. If they do not, right, that's a bad experience. Last point, uh, the uh, whole double blind thing. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, think this is bollocks, right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with being empirical. And I mean that literally. If you have questions about uh, the impact of a product, any product, whether it's an amplifier, a loudspeaker, or a power cord, right? Your first and last thought ought to be, can I get it in my house to listen to it myself? And if I cannot, maybe I should stop, just stop at that point and do something else. This is a, a, uh, a qualitative experience. The whole thing is a qualitative experience. I have found more people uh, dissatisfied with their high-end audio systems, uh, kind of directly proportional to their reliance on numbers or quantitative uh, kind of analyses. If, if you're being, if you are someone who is listening to your hi-fi through an audio forum, I s humbly su su suggest, submit that you're doing it wrong, right? You ought to be listening to music. Uh, you ought to be enjoying that music with friends and family. You ought to be uh, uh, creating an environment that uh, allows you to maybe disconnect from the regular every day that allows you to come back to that good place, that center place, that refilling, refreshing place. And I think that's why we do high-end audio in the first place. Uh, I think we do something else when we go on the high-end audio forums, right? when we go share our thoughts and experiences, when we argue, that's a, a different thing. And maybe it would help if we separated them out a little bit. And maybe we could get a little bit more comfortable with the idea that we know less than we think we do, right? Last point uh, is that other point, try before you buy. Any questions about high-end audio, try before you buy. I believe, personally, I believe that dealers have a tremendous amount of knowledge and value to provide to you if you are curious about what you might want to do next in your hi-fi system. So talk to them, ask them what their experiences are, um, build a relationship with your local dealer, and then go try something. Uh, at some point, we're gonna get back to the audio show circuit, uh, get back out into the world. And as we do, we'll have the opportunity to go meet more and more manufacturers, again, see them, uh, see who they are in real life and build a relationship with them too. And I think that uh, this is a good thing for those of us that are trying to, you know, figure out how to spend our money. I, I, High-end audio, I think is coolest when it is a relationship, uh, when it is something that you can share, not just with friends and family, but with the makers as well. I can't think of another uh, art where it's that participatory, where the relationship between consumer and manufacturer is, can, or can even be as tight as uh, high-end audio. So anyway, um, support your local artists. And by that, I mean your manufacturers. Do get your stuff hands on something to try it before you uh, buy it. And let me know how it goes. Comments are welcome uh, below. Feel free to go ahead and contact me at parttimeaudiofile.com. In the meantime, enjoy your uh, system and 
actually maybe listen to it. Cheers.